Hello. Welcome to Arvind Singh Academy. Myself, Arvind Kumar Singh, and I am here before you to discuss uh, IIT JE advance paper of 2017. We are going to discuss today the first paper, part one, uh, mathematics without wasting time. And uh, let me discuss about this paper. So, the first paper in which uh, section 1 which is asked for 28 marks and in this 28 marks there are 7 questions so each question for 4 marks the problem is that that one or more than one answer in each questions if you marked all of them are correctly then you will be awarded 4 marks otherwise if one or more is wrong answer then you will be given minus 2 but if you don't mark any wrong answer but not all correct some of them are correct then in that case you will be awarded partial marks one marks for each correct options so that is a positive things otherwise earlier there was a question if any version is wrong either full marks or minus negative marks no partial marks was earlier there but uh, now this is a partial marks uh, also awarded for each one of the correct response let us discuss the very first question and in this first question, it is given that which of the following is not not a square of it is a not a square of 3 into 3 matrix with real integers. A matrix of 3 into 3, a square of that matrix will be also a square matrix. And that matrix is are given here. Now we have to find that whether the entries of that square matrix whose squares are already given here, they have real entries or not. One concept is there that if any square matrix has real entries, their square will be also a matrix. If determinant of that matrix is positive, then entries of all entries of this square matrix are real. Means any square matrix which all entries are real, then a square of that matrix will be a square matrix and determinant of that matrix will be positive. So, I mean to say, if the determinant of a square of a matrix converse is there, determinant of a square of matrix is positive, then entries of all this matrix which a square is given are real. So, here a square of matrix are given we will find that whether their determinant is positive or not. If you calculate the determinant of this, then that will be minus 1. Determinant of this, that will be also minus 1. Determinant of this will be 1. And determinant of this will be also 1. So here, 2 of them has determinant minus 1. And these 2 has determinant plus 1. Plus 1 determinant is positive, means entries are real and here they are asking about not real so in that case option a and b will be answer of this question here because their determinant is negative it means entries all entries are not real whose square are given now the second question if a code which is not a tangent of the parabola y square is equal to 16x has the equation 2x plus y is equal to p and midpoint is hk then which of the following is possible values of p h and k chord which is not a tangent and middle point of that chord is given it means what we can say that locus of middle point of a chord is to be determined we know the locus of middle point of a chord locus of middle point of chord middle point of a code is given by t is equal to s1 where t is equal to tangent it means if this is given and this is h comma k a code is given parabola is given then locus is given by t comma s in place of x1 y1 there is hk so tangent can be obtained by replacing y square by y y1 and 2x by x plus x1 in place of x1 and y1 there are h and k so equation of tangent can be written as ky minus 8x plus h 
and S1 will be K square minus 16H. Keeping this view, uh, all this in mind here, 8X minus 8H is equal to K square minus 16H. Now, if I write here KY minus 8X is equal to K square minus 8H because minus 8H will come this side, it will be positive. But what the equation are given to us is 2X plus Y is equal to P. The given equation is 2X plus Y is equal to P. It means here we can say the coefficient of X is positive. So for comparing, we have to make this coefficient positive as well. So 8X minus KY will be 8H minus K square. To compare with the first equation, this has to be multiplied by 4 so that 8x and 8x can be easily compared. So if you multiply by 4 both the sides, 4 into 2x that will be 8x. So in that case this will be 8x plus 4y is equal to 4p. Comparing this 1 and 2, this is 1 and 2, we get the coefficient of y is 4 here and coefficient of y is minus k. So 4 is equal to minus k, it means k is equal to minus 4. k is equal to minus 4, it means first and second options are not correct answers because k is minus 3. Obviously, from C and D, one of them is correct. How you can find that one, correct one? To find that correct one, we can compare 4p is equal to 8h minus k square. 4p is equal to 8h minus k square. And therefore, we can write here 4p is equal to 4p is equal to 8h minus k square and p is equal to because if I put here 4p is equal to 8h and k is minus 4, so minus 4 whole square is 16 and 4p is equal to 8h minus 16, p is equal to 2h minus 4. Now, out of the given choice. If you see that, which one of them is going to satisfy this? Out of the given choice, if I take here P is equal to 2 and H is equal to 3, are they satisfying? P 2 and H 3. H 3, then H 3 to just 6. 6 minus 4 is 2. So P is equal to 2. And 2, P 2 and H 3 satisfying. Since out of the given option P is equal to 2 and H is equal to 3, satisfy this equation satisfy this third relation, satisfy third and therefore correct answer is, correct answer is D only and D will be the correct answer of this question. So on the basis of that, we can say that second, uh, for second question, answer is D. Now let us see the third one. A, B, X, Y be real numbers such that A minus B is equal to 1 and Y is not equal to 0. If the complex number Z satisfies this relation, then which one of the following is true? Z is equal to, few relations are already described here, that A minus B is equal to 1, and Z is X plus iota Y. A Z plus B upon Z plus 1. Although this question is very simple, but bit lengthy, I say. Here, I can write A Z plus B, a z plus b upon z plus 1 because z is equal to x plus iota y so i can write x plus iota y plus b upon x plus iota y plus 1 so that further can be written as x plus b plus iota y upon x plus 1 plus iota y we know Denominator is a complex number, so if we go to if you multiply by conjugate of this complex number, it would be real because z into z conjugate is equal to mod of z square. So if I look for the imaginary part of this, then where imaginary part will come? From where imaginary part will come? If I multiply this y with x plus one, imaginary part will come. If you multiply x plus b with minus y imaginary part will come. Remember one thing I am missing here, here it will be a also. a also will be there because a x a multiply by x and a multiply by y so that will be a y. Now imaginary part of 
ए जेड प्लस बी अपॉन जेड प्लस वन इज इक्वल टू बी गिवेन दिस एम्प्लॉय हेयर इट विल कम ए वाई एक्स प्लस वन माइनस वाई एक्स प्लस बी अपॉन डी नोमरेटर विल बी एक्स प्लस वन होल स्क्वायर प्लस वाई स्क्वायर एंड दैट इज गिवेन वॉट वाई सो ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दिस टू वी कैन राइट इट फर्दर as here if you see this multiplication a x y come from here and a x y come from there so these two will be cancels out here a y with 1 and here b y will left and if i took y common out of it then it will be left a minus b into y and y into x plus 1 whole square plus y square y cannot be equal to 0 so we can Since y is not equal to zero, x plus outer y, y is given, and therefore we can write it. This is cancels, and a minus b is one. So x plus one whole square plus y square is equal to one. It means x plus one whole square is equal to one minus y square, or x plus one is equal to plus minus under root one minus y square, and this employ x is equal to. Minus one plus minus root under one minus y square. Minus one plus minus root under one minus y square. A will be correct answer on the basis of this, and D will be correct answer minus one plus this. So A and D are correct answers out of this two. So therefore, we can say correct response are A and D. A and D are correct answer. Answer will be A and D. Okay. Now, moving ahead with the other questions, let us see. The next question is from probability, and this is given x and y are two events. Probability of x is one by three. Probability of x when y already happen is one by two. Probability of y when x already happen is two by five. Then which one of the following is true, and that we have to calculate. so to answer such question we will look for the go for the definition and here as per definition probability of x oblique y means what x oblique y means probability of x intersection y divided by probability of y this is what given and probability of similarly y oblique x means probability of y uh, when x already happen so let me start with this probability of y oblique x is probability of x intersection y upon probability of x because probability of y intersection x is given 2 by 5 and probability of x intersection y is not known but probability of x is 1 by 3 that is given and therefore we can say probability of x intersection y is equal to 2 by 5 1 by 3 will multiply this side so that will be 2 by 15 and probability of x intersection y is 1 by 5 given and therefore that will be not correct answers so b is rejected now you got probability of x intersection y here probability of x probability of x oblique y is given and in that case probability of x intersection y upon probability of y so we can calculate with the help of this probability of y as well and what will be that because these two are already known these two are knowing probability of x intersection y is 2 by 15 we have obtained and probability of x oblique y is already given here what is that given probability of x oblique y is 1 by 2 this is 1 by 2 given 1 by 2 given this employee 1 by 2 is equal to 2 by 15 upon probability of y y and therefore probability of y will be what 2 by 15 into 1 by 2 will divide that will be multiply in numerator 2 by 1 so 4 by 15 probability of y is 4 by 15 which is given in d so d is correct answer now we have to calculate probability of x union y probability of x union y is equal to probability of x plus probability of y minus probability of x intersection y right so in that case what will come probability of x is already we have calculated 1 by 3 is given probability of y we have calculated that 
4 by 15, right? And probability of x intersects and y is 2 by 15. It means 4 by 15 minus 2 by 15 is 2 by 15. 1 by 3 can be written as 5 by 15. 5 by 15 plus 2 by 15 is equal to 7 by 15. 7 by 15 is probability of x union y that is also not given here. So therefore C is a wrong answer. Now we have to check the first A. A x not y is 1 by 2 or not. Probability of x not y, probability of x not oblique y, this is what given. That means probability of x not intersection y divided by probability of y. x not y, what do you mean by x not y? If I say here x and this is say y, x not but y, it means the region would be like this. Uh, this is the region. And this region further can be described because x not but y, x ko chhodkar y. So what will be this? This further can be described as probability of y minus probability of x intersection y. And that is divided by probability of y. So what is that? 1 minus probability of x intersection y divided by probability of y. Probability of x intersection y is already we have calculated 2 by 15 this is 4 by 15 so 1 minus 2 by 4 that is 1 minus 1 by 2 what is that 1 by 2 and probably uh, this is a uh, probably what probably really this is a uh, 1 by 2 is given so therefore a is correct answer so in this uh, more than one choice question answer is a and d are correct response and on the basis of that we can say a and d are correct answer of this question a answer is A and D and these are correct options. So hopefully I think you got it. Now let me write the next question. Here let this x is greatest integer function less than or equal to x obviously fx is equal to x cos pi x plus greatest integer function x. This must be integral value and if I look for this then if x this is an integer even integer then plus something will come in first quadrant minus something will come in fourth quadrant but in these two quadrant it must be positive so in case of this integral gives even value then this will be positive if this give odd value in that case minus will come in this quadrant plus will come in this quadrant in second and fourth quadrant cos is always negative so this will give negative value. It means if this is a even, then it will be positive. If this is an odd, then it will be negative. So all depends upon the sign of the value of this greatest integer function, whether it is even or odd. So to solve this question, solution of this question can be dealt with like this minus one. We can write here the question fx is given like x cos pi x plus pi times of greatest integer function x. This is what given. I can say this must have integral value and the function will come integral multiple of pi plus x. But depending upon whether this integral multiple of pi is even or odd, so there will be two situations. Whether this is even, then it will be positive. If this is odd, then it will be negative. So this better can be described as minus 1 to the power greatest integer function of x, x cos pi x, that will come, right? If it will be even, then it will be positive. If this will be odd, then it will be negative. Now, whether this is discontinuous at this, you know, the greatest integer functions are discontinuous at all its integral points. So here it will be discontinuous at minus 1, 1 and 2. What about 0? Why at 0 we can see because minus 1 to the power 0 plus 0 or minus 0 both are the same thing. So here doubtful cases is 0 only. And we will check it that whether at 0, 0 minus h or 0 plus h this will be always positive and therefore it will be the same value and hence it will be continuous at 0, discontinuous at all its other integral points and therefore answer will be A, C and D. F 0 plus H 
if you can say like this limit h tends to 0 then that will come minus 1 0 plus h is 0 and that will be x cos pi x 0 plus h like this that will come right and here what will happen minus 1 to the power 0 is 1 and in place of x I should write here 0 plus h and 0 plus h cos like this so that will be h cos pi h pi h because h is going to be 0 so 0 multiply by everything is 0 right now cos pi h lies between minus 1 to 1 or even h is equal to 0 that will be 0 cos 0 is equal to 1 limit h tends to 0 f 0 minus h in that case minus 1 to the power minus 1 because 0 minus greatest integer function of 0 minus h is less than 0 and anything less than 0 their value will be minus 1 in that case here 0 minus h will come and cos pi into 0 minus h cos pi into 0 minus h so that will be minus 1 to the power minus 1 that is 1 upon minus 1 which will be minus 1 itself and minus h into cos minus pi h cos minus theta is cos theta but limit h tends to 0 and therefore this will be h cos pi h because h is going to 0 so that will be 0 so in left limit and right limit and function at that point all these three if I calculate f is equal to 0 then in that case also it will be 0 and therefore all these three value are same 0 plus h f 0 minus h and f 0 are all same and therefore function is continuous at 0 and discontinuous at all other integral points so therefore answer will be what it is a continuous at 0 and discontinuous at all so a c d discontinuous they are asking about discontinuous so answer will be a c d here answer will be a c d you can check accordingly with this answer is a c d and if you check it once it will be positive the second time it will be negative so left limit and right limit will not exist together and therefore answer will be d now here is a question 2x minus y plus 1 is equal to 0 is a tangent to the hyperbola this then which of the following cannot be the side of right angle triangle to answer this question uh, there is a one concept and condition of tangency in hyperbola you have studied that if y is equal to mx plus c just let me write this recall this uh, solution y is equal to mx plus c will be tangent to hyperbola to hyperbola x square by a square minus y square by b square is equal to 1 if c is equal to c square is equal to a square m square minus b square here equation of line is given what is given y is equal to 2x minus 1 right now so m is what 2 c is what minus 1 and here a square a is what given parabola h x square by a square minus y square by 16 is equal to 1 so comparing with comparing with a x square by a square minus y square by b square is equal to 1 we find b is equal to 4 now using this condition this condition if i'll go for this and putting the value in a b m and c here you will get it that uh, the value of this will come what if i would write here the value of this will come c a square that is minus 1 square right and is equal to a square a is itself a m h 2 a square that is 4 minus b a square that is 4 a square so it will come 1 is equal to 4 a square minus 16 so 16 plus 1 is 17 17 is equal to 4 a square and therefore a square is equal to 17 by 4 and a is equal to under root 17 by 2 so 2a 
in literal sense we can say 2a is equal to 17 that is one of the relation right so if i say 2a is 17 here put 2a is equal to 17 there then what will come if 2 is 17 the 4 square is 16 1 square is 1 so 16 plus 1 would be 17 it means this will represent right angle triangle right angle triangle right if 2a is root 17 and 8 and 1 then sum of two sides must be greater than third side this will be a triangle but not right angle triangle triangle but not right angle not right angle side of right angle triangle not right angle right so here a is this under root 17 by 2 4 and 1 that will be not a triangle even is not a triangle why not triangle because sum of two sides must be greater than third side and here it will be under square root of 17 is 4 point something divided by 2 is 2 point something 2 point something plus 1 is 3 point something which is not greater than 4 and therefore it is not a triangle and here a is what a is 17 so this is 2 point something and plus 2 is 4 point something which is greater than 4 so this is also a triangle but not right angle triangle but not right angle so it means only one of them is right angle triangle and they are asking cannot so answer will be b c and d will be answer of this question b c d are answer of this question answer will be b c and d these are not right angle triangle so on the basis of this we can calculate this now moving to the question number 43 a function defined from real number to 0 1 so domain is real number and this is from 0 to 1 range is 0 to 1 so is a continuous function then following functions have at least one value 0 at some point in this interval it means clearly this is a question somehow related to Rolle's theorem let us consider each one of let us discuss each one of them for first option a let gx be any function or even you write pqrx say px is any function px is e to the power x minus 0 to x ft sin t dt if i differentiate this p dash x then it will be e to the power derivative of e to the power x is e to the power x and derivative of a definite integrand by Newton Leibniz rule x replace t replaced by x so that will be fx minus sin x and then derivative of x that is 1 minus put f0 and sin 0 t in place of t you have to put lower limit and derivative of lower limit that would be 0 so second function will be negligible now e to the power 0 this is the derivative in x belong to 0 to 1 when x belong to 0 to 1 when x is belong to 0 to 1 if i say p does 0 to 1 then value of e 0 is 1 e 0 is 1 and e 1 is e that is approximately 2.718 so the range of this is more than 1 and this would be less than 1 why because fx lies between fx lies between 0 to 1 less than 1 that is less than 1 something less than 1 and value of sin x is also less than 1 less than 1 multiply by less than 1 will be much lesser than 1 and this is always greater than 1 so greater than 1 minus less than 1 it would be positive and since f dash x is greater than 0 and therefore we can say px is increasing function increasing function px is increasing function and p0 is equal to what is that e to the power 0 minus 0 to 0 ft sin x that will come which is equal to 0 uh, 1 e to the power 0 h 1 and that 0 to 0 integrand will be 0 so 1 and so px will be always greater than 1 and therefore no point 
lies between because it is an increasing function so px always lies greater than 1 increasing function graph will be like this here p0 is equal to 1 and p0 is equal to 1 0 is 1 and graph is increasing so px somewhere if this is a 1 0 to 1 and px any value for x value will be always lies greater than 1 so this is a there is no value where it will be 0 in interval 0 to 1. So first option is not an answer. They are which of the following function have value 0 at this interval. Now concluding uh, discussing the second part x to the power 9 minus fx b option x to the power 9 minus fx x to the power 9 minus fx let this function is described as qx we are going to discuss part b and now qx q dash x is equal to what is that 9x square minus f dash x 9x square minus f dash x but remember here the value of fx is 0 to 1 that is something lesser than 1 and this is also lesser than 1 0 to 1 power of 9 would be less than 1 so this is negative gx is negative i can say gx is negative right now if i put g0 g0 here then that will be 0 minus fx and fx since fx is lies between 0 to 1 that is something positive and therefore because this is a positive fx is positive multiply by negative is minus fx which is less than 0 and g1 is what g1 is 1 to the power 9 is 9 and minus f1 f1 is something lesser than 1 so lesser than 1 1 minus lesser than 1 will be greater than 0 f0 and f1 has a positive sign this is a theory that if two value f alpha and beta f alpha and f beta are of opposite sign then their one point must exist where function becomes zero so since here g0 and g1 g0 and g1 are opposite sign are of opposite sign opposite sign and therefore there exist at least one at least one point point where gx must be equal to zero for example if you look for the graphically this is x axis or this is y axis if i say this is x axis and this is y, uh, x axis and zero is something a point where function become zero and this is one something function is less than this at one it is positive this is g1 is positive at 1 g1 is positive and at 0 g0 is negative so there must be a point where they lie intersect x axis and therefore this is a true so in this question b part it is a valid and there will be at least one point where the function will be equal to 0 so b is correct response b is correct now we will see for c can see if x lies between 0 to 1 fx lies between 0 to 1 so this is a positive and this integrand will also give the positive value because it is a 0 to pi by 2 in first quadrant so it will give a positive value so positive plus positive is always positive so this is a greater than 0 so it never comes in between somewhere 0 to 1 it is always greater than 0 and this is a, for all value of x so they are not going to become zero under any circumstances. So C option is not appropriate. So this is not possible. C option is not possible. Now looking for D, whether the D is correct or not. So D is, and again we consider another function less Sx is equal to x minus 0 to pi by 2 ft cos t. Sx is equal to for D option, let sx is equal to what was the question sx is equal to x minus x minus 
zero to pi by two minus one, right? F t cos t d t zero to f pi by two minus x. Sorry, pi by two minus x. Pi by two minus x. F t cos t d t cos t d t. And therefore, in that case, what will happen? S zero is equal to what will happen? If x lies between zero to one, it will be negative. S zero is equal to what? Zero minus zero to pi by two f t cos t d t. That integrand will be positive. So this will be positive multiply by negative. H negative. So that will be zero to pi by two f t cos t d t, and which will be less than zero. Now s one is equal to. If I say s one, then what will happen? One minus zero to pi by two minus one f t cos t d t. In this case, what will be the answer? That you have to calculate. So in that case, if you see this, this is a negative already, and this must be positive because this integrand is pi by two minus one. Pi by two is one point one seven, and this is less than one, less than one. So of course, this will be the integrand value will be much lesser than one, and therefore it will be a positive. So positive and negative s zero and s one has a positive sign, and therefore in similar way, and there must exist at least one value where they intersect x axis means at least one point where this will be zero. So here in you can say. D option is also correct answer. So options B and D are correct in this one. So B and D are correct. Answers are B and D. Answer is B and D. These two are correct answers where at least one value will exist. So this first segment I have discussed here. I hope you have enjoyed. The next se section of this part will be in the different video. try and watch our videos and subscribe our channel youtube to be update and get some more important mathematical calculations formula questions concept tricks and techniques everything you can get through our channel and um, subscribe our winning academy thank you thank you very much for watching this keep watching and watch the solutions of the remaining questions section 2 in next video so thanks a lot god bless